Users with editor or admin access can create a new app by clicking a Create App button in the bottom left corner. They can start an app from a blank project or from a number of available templates. To create an app, an editor needs to specify its name, icon, icon color and click Create App button. Once it's done, a new app will be opened in edit mode. To connect a new data source, click on the data sources icon on the left sidebar and on the connect button in the panel that opens. You can choose from a number of different data source types. After doing this, you'll be prompted to fill your data source connection details. Then you can test connection to verify that it's working or click connect a data source to add it to your app. One of the most common operations you do in UI Bakery is loading a list of objects. In order to do this, you need to create a new action. Choose a load table as its type and then select the table that you want to load. Click on the run action button to see the list of rows your table returns in the result panel that pops up. This works for all data sources that have a text structure like SQL databases and spreadsheets. After you load the list of objects, you can display it using a table component. In order to do this, you need to drag this component from the left panel into the working area. Using a component settings panel on the right hand side, you can show and hide table columns, change their order, as well as change other component properties. UI Bakery allows transforming the data that comes from the database or API by writing JavaScript code. You can do that by enabling the transfer result toggle inside of your action and writing a JavaScript code that does what you need. In this example, we wanted to add a full name property as a concatenation of first and last name properties. As you can see, this property is being added to the result of the load customer's action. All components connected to this action will now receive a new data set. Now, we can add another column to the table that would display the full name of a customer. We can also change the order of the columns and hide the columns that display the first and last name separately. Sometimes you might want to change the data that is displayed in your component. Let's assume that you want to replace a list of customers with a list of employees. In order to do this, you first need to create an action that fetches the required data from a data source. Afterwards, you need to bind the data from this action to the data field of the respective component. For some components like table, detail card and so on, you might also need to click the regenerate structure button. In our case, this will automatically regenerate the columns of the table based on the data structure of an action's data. UI Bakery also allows sharing data in state between components by linking them. One of the most common scenarios is when you want to view a selected row of a table inside of a separate form. You can do that by referencing your table component and using data of a selected row property inside of the data field of the form component. It's worth to note that all components you add in the working area receive a unique ID that you can use to reference them. Okay. Now let's see how to push the data from your form to the data source. First, you need to create an action with an update row type and select the table you want to update. You can send updates as a JavaScript object or switch to the UI mode that allows setting up the columns one by one. In our case, we want to update the whole row of a table, so we will send it as a JavaScript object that equals the value of the form at the time when the action is executed. We also need to specify the condition for the update query. For these purposes, we can use the customer number of the record that we want to update. Let's test the update action by changing the field on the form and clicking the run action button. The result of the action returns the updated record and, as you can see, it has the new data. Last thing left to do is updating the data in the table upon the update row action execution. For these purposes, we can use the unsuccess trigger. Now, when the form is submitted, the data in the table will be invalidated. Another common scenario is creating a filter for your table. 
To do this, start by dragging an input component inside of your working area. Let's also change the name of it and align other components so that our app looks better. The input component has the name input, which you can see on the top of the right sidebar. Then use the value of the input as a condition in the load customer's action. UI Bakery has auto trigger feature for actions. If it's on and an action depends on the value of some UI component, every time user changes the UI component, the action will be executed. In our case, we can see that if we change the value of the input, the new filtered data is being displayed in the table. Debugging is a vital part of the software development process. In UI Bakery, debugging information can be accessed using an additional panel inside of your action. Here you can see the payload that has been sent to the UI Bakery data source. Besides that, you can access additional debugging information in the logs tab. It displays the history of the action executions and its different lifecycle states. This can be useful if your action has several steps and uses the result or error mappers. To test it, let's remove the input that our action depends on and see what happens when we try to execute this action. Now we have the error messages both in the toasts and in the logs tab. To fix it, we only need to remove the invalid component reference from the action filter. Now when we execute the action, it works as expected and the data is being displayed correctly. Once your app is ready, you usually want to deploy it and provide end-user access for your team. To do this, first click on the Deployment button. When the drop-down opens, you can choose the environments you want to deploy to. Besides that, it's also possible to set a specific version, its name and description. This information can be later accessed in the app's version history. Now what is left to do is inviting your users so they can start using your app.